Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. Our heroes won over Quintown, but now it's under attack. Juniper is growing more nervous as her bites don't heal. Quinny spoke to the townsfolk with mixed success, while Butthole offered them a brighter future backed up by Ginny. Can Quinny connect with his daughter and save his hometown before he loses everything? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons. Before the chaos that followed, there was a brief moment, Quinny, where through your thaumaturgical cell phone, uh, you heard uh, Ginny declare loudly uh, to all listening that no matter whether you were a good person or a bad person, um, that you'd done something that scared you because it needed to be done and for the right reasons. And more importantly, I think perhaps than any of that, uh, because you were her dad. What uh, what happens for Quinny in that moment? Ooh, that that hits that hits hard. Um, I th- I think I made a sound last episode. That was, was that great. was yeah, that was Quinny's reaction as well. Just a, a release that he didn't know of 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 something that he didn't know he was holding on to. Just so he's at the window and she says that he just goes, uh and uh I I don't think he has time to fully understand, you know, his emotional state, but he's really happy. Mm. Uh, and it hits him intensely enough that it, it doesn't feel like joy. Have you ever been mm-hmm. so happy that like, you know, you, you get like emotional. You're almost like, confused. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah. why this is nice. And uh, this is great. Why am I like this right now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just like a full body overload. Just the first kind of moments of that, I think before what comes next. Great. Um, so um, there is a, a line of fire um, in the sky um because the trees are no longer on the ground um you can see them rising in a flaming ring um elevated by something um and on the air you can hear uh the groans of the undead um and uh crendon turns to you uh butthole um and just says oh oh shit oh shit this is this has got to be Chickalus. He's he, he's levitating it. The, all all the undead. Oh God! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. They talked about maybe trying this. I didn't think they'd actually do it. They. I think they've got a herd. We got to go. Uh, at which point, um, uh, someone clears their their throat. Like there's already like kind of like panic noises going on throughout the crowd. And um, Penelope and Ford uh, are the kind of there at the edge of the crowd. Uh, with a cart full of possessions and tra- packed traveling bags, and uh, they uh, they just yell, "Well, yeah, you heard the boy. Time to pack up and go. Come on, let's go, let's go. We'll be back later. Don't worry about it. Free pumpkins all around, but later." Um, and uh, immediately they start um, running around helping people figure out what to grab. Now, of course, the key to this is you've mentioned that um, people need to bring not only some of their possessions, but more importantly what they'll need to farm effectively um, at the fortress. So immediately they start rallying towards that, um, but uh, leaving uh, sort of the three of you to deal with sort of the tactical ramifications of, of what's going on. So Quinny, I think it's safe to say you, you rejoin the group, yep. um, you kind of rush out. Um, Ginny is, of course, despite all the chaos, playing it super cool. She knows you couldn't hear what she was saying, so she's good. Everything's fine. Um, she's just kind of like, look, Quinny, they're doing, they're doing the thing. So... I think the town's got your back. Uh, great, good. Thank you. Um, look, it's about to get real dangerous here. You should make sure your mom's got everything she needs packed up and, and, and keep her yeah. safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll go help. But honestly, I'm, I'm more worried for anyone who tries to fuck with mom than I am for anything that, that could fuck up mom. But yeah, you're right. I'll, great. I'll go. The, if your stuff. mom's good, then go around and prevent anybody from spending all their time trying to load up statues. We got to move. This is like not everybody brings everything they want. This is farming shit and shit you need to live. Go. Um, uh, and she winks at you. And she's just like, I'm a thief. I travel light. I got it. And she runs perfect. off and starts... Uh, 
like just like smacking like vases out of people's hands <laughs> um, and just like shattering them. Uh, you see her like backhand <laughs> Ivan, who's like just grabs like photo albums. Not it's like there's no room. <laughs> flipping through, grabs one of a baby, puts it in their hand, closes it, throws it back in the house. Quinny like on this emotional roller coaster of like happy and also oh god oh fuck what is that? Uh, I think just lets out like a somewhat hysterical like laugh. Uh, not like one of those like long like mad scientist cackles, but just like a, <laughs> oh man, and then just immediately looks <laughs> to the horizon again. It's like, all right, <clears throat> holy shit. Okay, so what did I hear? Chickalus Nage? Is this we kill him? Maybe this all kind of doesn't go quite as sideways. He's around. Did I hear that Brandon, right? Craig, if we kill uh, him, does this go back down? Do you know? Um, and he just points, uh, and you actually watch the ring fall. Um, it falls back down, uh, locking you in with whatever they let in. Um, Fabulous. Okay, and he so says, gotta- uh, look, if, 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 if we were keeping an eye on you guys as, as you came through, um, but again, uh, uh Ginny, we, we thought you, you were her and she was you. So we, we, my team got off track, but look, if they were tracking you, they probably know not necessarily where you came from, but at least the direction you came from. So my guess is like our, our only chance is to just break out of this thing. And we just got to fight our way through. Um, but my guess is they'll they'll have set up uh, some things along the way. So we just got to be prepared for a pretty long and ugly fight. But all you got your, uh, you know, anti-undead stuff still good to go for the day or what? Yeah, uh, not great. We didn't oh. sleep, so kind of tired. Got some, not a lot. Uh, big <laughs> I will priority. say you can consider the the time you spent uh, at, at the Brown Barrows like a refreshing time where you... You, you, you can heal up. You can consider that a, a long rest. Oh, that's nice. The ice tea Damn, is really ice fucking tea. good. Um, <laughs> and Juniper, for you, you just like, uh, that rabies med might have cocaine in it. You're not sure, but, you know, up, up you go. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, but- I'm going to crash so hard when we get home. <laughs> I am as hyped as a person could be. Uh, so, Crendon, do you want to fight to defend these people or do you just want to run? I, none of us really have the power to supervise you and we weren't giving you a death sentence. So this is a your call. Yeah. Uh, yeah you, you, I mean, some of them are my friends and stuff, but they seem like they're kind of assholes. And you guys have been really good to me. And I, I don't think these people deserve to die uh, eaten by zombies just because, um, because the commander died. And also... I mean, it was a while ago. I think we should have been over this for a while. I don't know why we're not mercenaries anymore. So yeah, sure. You've got my, and he like looks down to his hands. He's like, my hands. Okay, congratulations. You're being promoted to guy in charge of getting the carts together and running the convoy. Uh, and he just like cuts his his hands free. And he's like, are you better with the wolf stuff or do you want weapons? What's your deal? Um, uh, uh, and um, he, uh, he just kind of like looks at the sky a bit. And he's like, yeah, no, I, I should be able to wolf out again soon. I think that ice tea was really refreshing. Okay, cool. Uh, if you need, but I'll I'll get the cart people together. No, don't worry about weapons. Right. Okay, uh, you know, ah, that's um, that. Sorry, it's, it's scary when I'm a wolf. All right, yeah, let's go. Uh, and he goes and starts like um, rounding people up. Fabulous. So now we've got three of us, and we've got a herd of goddamn zombies, and we have no way out of the flaming wall. Uh, we can distract the zombies for a while because realistically, zombies are not smart, and if they had to herd them, then it's, they're not in charge of them. So there's a possibility, Quinny, you're really fast and bounce around. If we can make you make a shitload of noise, maybe it'll follow you instead of random farms. Yep. Yeah, I can do that. Um, also, I can put out about 30 feet of fire instantly when I bust out old frostbite there. Okay. I, I can I can definitely help with that. I have I have resistance to fire, and I cast protection from energy on myself. Okay. Okay. Fabulous. So once the convoy's together, we can get it out. The big thing for us is keeping the herd from getting to here where all the people are. Yeah. So we're going to have to go out to the herd. <clears throat> Right, um, well, I will say, um, just for, for your planning on this, uh, obviously this is going to be like a big old fashioned baggage train fight. So convoy, <laughs> yeah. um, the, uh, the fertile fields are, are large enough and the wall was built pretty fucking wide that you do actually have a bit of time. Um, like the, the zombies are encroaching, but they're like, it's not like a world war Z, like fucking sprinting at you mob. Yeah. It's just kind of like a bunch of them walking dead style closing in so you do have a few moments if you want to try and like arrange things get the baggage train together all that sort of stuff it's not like they'll be on you in like two minutes they'll be on you soon but you do have it's a stressful amount of prep time but you do actually have prep time queenie can you go up the tower and see which direction the herd's coming from yep uh and i will try to basically amble up there combination of second story work and 
whatever else you need from me. To sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's fine. It's a nice, easy, easy track up. Okay. Um, all right. So um, you can see that there are uh, yeah, from the looks of. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, technically Ginny's, but it's fine. What's hers? I've yours? stolen my daughter's telescope. Yes, uh, it, it, it tracks um, <laughs> all in the family. Um, uh, at a quick glance, um, the uh, it's not great news. Um, there are essentially um, uh, where are my numbers here? There are uh, four smaller herds uh, that have been kind of brought in from all corners um, of the uh, of the globe, um, and you can see that there are actually herdsmen inside the ring of fire with them so you basically have um uh riders um kind of like corralling uh the zombie mob inward so you're basically going to have a ring of, of zombies slowly closing in um you know you need to go dead north um to get back to treebury uh you know treebury is your best shot out um from there um you'll have to kind of make it through the foothills once you're up into Icewind Dale proper, you think you'll actually be in pretty advantageous territory. Also, that's closer to where you could get a message back to Forlorn Hope, at which point they could send reinforcements. So essentially, your goal, uh, your mission, is to get the baggage train safely into Icewind Dale um, and uh, hope for the best. Okay. I'll shout down from up there and just say, uh, they've got riders kind of herding them around. I'm no good against groups, but maybe if I take out those leaders, you know, might keep them disorganized, might give us a better chance to punch through. All right. Uh, yeah. So in terms of the carts, Tom, just what we're seeing prepared, do these people have horses or is this going to be people dragging carts? I just want to uh, know. It's, it's mules all the way down, baby. Okay. Just, so faster just, than a person yeah. walking. Good to yes. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, they, uh, they get together essentially. Um, think of this as more, but just for my own tracking. So you're aware um, the equivalent of like five heavily, heavily laden carts. Um, okay. So in terms of the way I'll be tracking them, there are which you can actually think of as like small clusters of carts. But um, basically, there there are five, um, yeah, five quote quote carts um, that will be in play oh. during during this. Um, essentially, the way the carts work, uh, they've got their own armor class. Um, I have collective HP for the wagon train altogether. Um, but each cart has its own HP as well. If a cart goes down, um, you'll lose some of the supplies unless you find a way to like kind of re reappropriate them and stick them to something else. Um, but basically, um, their HP kind of accounts for both all the materials they're bringing um, to set up the farm um, in Forlorn Hope, as well as the people defending them. So the farmers aren't good in a fight. They're not going to be able to like be out there helping, but they can, you know, do the classic kind of like peasants fighting zombies shit where like, you know, push them off with um like bat them off with uh army with, tools or, yeah with tools and, and that sort of thing right. um but it'll also kind of allow us to track how many of them make it out mm -hmm. all right so we got to gear up the convoy if we can find any additional traps or nastiness does anybody use it, it, it you just like down all of a sudden so, oh fuck okay uh does anybody use any like manure or anything that we can make kind of explode if we wanted to put together like improvised hand grenades or shit i mean yeah this place is full of animal shit but i don't know how to make it explosive okay scratch that um i guess fire works with zombies so any booze we can empty the bars and then people can literally stick a rag in the top set it on fire and chuck it in and that deals with zombies uh juniper do you have anything in your weird arsenal that'll help these people um i mean i can moonbeam they don't move that fast so i imagine i can probably hit a bunch of them okay so we got that in the combo but anything prep wise we got a little uh, bit of time before uh, we got to move um not gonna lie i don't have much on me i kind of <laughs> lost everything when i died um although i mean Look, I've got a crossbow. I can try to take out the hunters or the herders. That's kind of okay. all I got. So it seems like we're going to be good at protecting this once we're moving, but we got to clear as much of a path as we can. Quinny, this is for you. Uh, and he just flicks the invisibility coin like it's a coin, or invisibility ring like it's a coin towards you. Yep. And he's like, all right, so here's the question. Do you want to wait for us or do you want to go out while you're invisible and just try to, you know, take out one of the two northern herds, ride, ride, like riders, riders, I'm, whatever? I'm going right now. Yeah, okay, you I, go do that. That's the best I can do for us. We'll get these people together, and when we're coming back, we'll just trust that you'll show up. So let us be a distraction as a convoy. Fuck up riders. We'll help the people here until we get moving. Sounds good. 
All right. So um, I'm assuming, Tyler, you're mainly aiming for the riders um, that are controlling the northern herd? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry. Th- these are cardinal point herds, Tom? Just for these in my brain. Now That's that they're, right. Now that they're through, they, the one thing I, I want to keep in mind is, like, it's not like there's a cross, so there's just, like, convenient diagonals mm-hmm. that you can just, like, bishop and chess your way through that just don't have zombies. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, <laughs> more like a, like a, a fucking, like, Simon Says game. They've now spread out, but generally, yeah, it's the quadrants are north, south, east, west. Great. North is the um, where you came in. Um initially and is the direction you ultimately need to go now so that's where we'll be headed um quinny um you are sprinting uh striding and sprinting i'd imagine uh okay. towards uh, the herd can you go ahead and roll me a stealth check please i'm not using the ring yet I will oh say. okay cool. uh, i will uh i basically want that to provide me advantage if i need it when i don't have it right gotcha uh, so that is going to be for stealth, a 25. 25. I'll say right now, um, for these riders, you know, riding around zombies, trying to herd them and stuff like that. I'm assuming they have no supernatural control over them. It's just like dangling bait in front of. Yeah. The, them, these right? are, are, are literally like, um, they're, uh, they're, they're, you can see as you approach, uh, they're all kind of humanoid in, in shape. Um, they're wearing cloaks of um, just kind of covered in in zombie guts, just full Walking Dead, walk amongst them style. So nice. wearing like zombie stank, um, but yeah, basically almost have like they've um, got like cans trailing on the back of them. <laughs> yeah, saying like newly married. Um, yeah. But they're uh, they're um, more like um, if you're uh, we're on a horse trying to herd things where they're like going behind the zombies, just kind of forcing them forward. They have um, mm-hmm. long weapons. Um, Think like um, sort of like a, almost a long spear um, shaft with sort of a broad, <laughs> almost like scoop on it. Like not quite a scoop, but um, a Trident tongs. Front kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of where they're just using it to like corral the zombies forward. Um, and because the zombies don't really put up much resistance, if you can just aim them in the right direction, they're kind of going that way. So um, for you to effectively distract, like for you to disrupt this herd, um, dropping the two who are kind of riding behind it is the way to go. Now the catch is they are behind it. So mm-hmm. it'll be up to you to determine A, how you want to try and get past the zombies and B, how you want to try and take out the riders. Now I rolled for both of them. Um, both of them are very focused on this. Also they are mounted, um, but uh, you can tell from the way these horses are reacting that like the horses are spooked. There's fire behind them. Uh, they're covered in zombie guts, and as a result, they're not like fully responsive. Um, they are um, war horses, so they're clearly like well trained. Okay. But the riders are having to pay active attention to what they're doing. They aren't just like having a great time, which will benefit your stealth quite a bit. Okay. My plan here, then, as I'm kind of seeing this and trying to math out how to be like as efficient and brutal, you know, as possible, is. I'm going to try to dimension door behind these riders. Mm. And then I'm going to Eldritch Blast firing two beams, basically take like a V shot, hitting nice. both of them. It's repelling. So I want to knock them out of their horses and into the horde of zombies. Very nice. Okay. I love that. Um, so I assume you've, you've stowed, and forgive me, is it Frostbite now or Breach of Contract? Uh, I like both. <laughs> Right. So we'll just like alternate back and yeah. forth. They're both great. <laughs> yeah. Frost breach of contract. That's right. <laughs> Frost breach is a pretty good name, just on its Frost own. Frost breach is pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great. Um, I just didn't want to lose that in case it was important. Um, cool. It's only important to me. It's not. It's not important to anyone else. <laughs> Au contraire, sir. Listening to it, I was like, that's so fucking cool. Um, Ginny is really bleeding into my way of thinking about things. Quinny's name. Uh, okay, great. Um, so you're you're running, um, and you can see. Uh, the shambling dead yeah um you know as as uh in any of these things as soon as the as soon as your smell hits um they immediately begin to sort of zero in on you um and start shuffling doing that classic like you know one one arm out like i'll get you soon thing and they do start moving quicker um they're not running certainly but they're also uh they do that like resident evil double step thing that uh the slow like zombies stumbling forward yeah 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 because now there's yeah. there's a target before it was yeah. just kind of like go this way and they're like well, i guess and now they're like this uh they want those sweet sweet quinny brains um <laughs> so they're uh they, they start to actively uh move towards you that said based on your height 
the riders do not seem to have noticed you. What do you okay. do? Uh, the first step is dimension door. Uh, and so I basically kind of peek out to, to kind of get an idea of the range I need to travel. I want to basically get behind these guys mm -hmm. sufficiently that they won't notice me arriving. Yep. Um, so I've got 500 feet to work with. You've got, you've got plenty. The, the, okay. the, you know, the, the herd is deep, but it's not that deep. Okay. So then I cast dimension door and that does place me behind them. Cool. Um, so uh, if we're is, looking at breaking the, things down moment to moment. Yes, please. That is an you. action. So I, okay. I would use my bonus action to hide because I'm a, I have that ability. All right. So what does, uh, what does the dimension door actually look like as you rush, rush towards them? Do you just sort of blink out? Is, is it, are we bamfing? Like what's the, uh, it, it, what's we, the yeah, we kind of touched on it a little bit. I think because of the nature of where my powers ultimately come from, mm -hmm. they are infernal. I think it's a little bit of smoke and brimstone. Um, Great. Yeah. Uh, as I, as I kind of uh, blink out of existence in one place and just emerge uh, instantly from uh, in another. All right, go ahead and roll to hide, please. Uh, 31. I mean, I rolled well, but I didn't roll that well. I am, I'm good at a few things. <laughs> Look, when the most- Never ask can... me to make a medicine or nature <laughs> check, survival, religion, it's all garbage. Athletics, no. <laughs> Hiding, yes. I mean, <laughs> Lying and hiding. That's <laughs> <laughs> the title of Quinny's autobiography. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So you uh, you managed to hide. Um, you can tell again the riders are, are having a, a, a hard time, um, and uh, you just hear one of them kind of mutter like, "You know, when you said hiding behind the zombies was going to be the safest place to be, I believed you, but I didn't realize how fucking stinky it was going to be back here." And the other guy's like, "Shut up, Marv." Just keep driving the zombies. Um, and they continue to to drive the zombies. Um, completely unaware of the silent killer behind them. Meanwhile, um, Juniper and Butthole, um, you've mentioned that you're going to try and help everyone get their, their literal shit together uh, to go. Is there anything else you're, you're doing? Or is it at this point just like overseeing? Um, yeah, I think I would... Um... I think I kind of take like a morale boosting approach, like mm -hmm. kind of just telling everybody like, that's right. Yeah. We're going to like, kind of like a, we're going to be okay. Not wanting anyone to panic. Um, Can you, and then a, I, and, oh, sorry. No, no, no. I, I was just going to say, um, let's roll check for that. Uh, sure. I'm basically going to let you uh, give bonuses to the wagon train. If uh, you roll high, I think this is, I mean, this is kind of like an inspirational check. So yeah. I'm curious what stat, maybe, I mean, this is a weird one, but it might be nature for you in that you're, you're leaning on your like juniper powers. Um, I think it's, I, I would think it's more of a performance check because okay, I think sure. she, because it's like her confidence is like, all right, everyone, we've done this before. We've done this a lot. This is kind of our thing. Just let's get us all together and we'll get you out of here. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with uh performance, please. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll give you advantage because I think, given that you slipped into Moss for a second there, uh, this is legitimately yeah. something Moss does all the fucking time. Totally. Uh, but there's the additional pressure of of how badly it went last time, so wanting to you know make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Not not great. It's only a ten. Ten. Um, okay. So. Um, so very 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 minor bonus. All right, um, and uh, Ryan, what is Butthole doing? Uh, Butthole would like to. There, there may be there may be too much here, Tom. But here's the idea. So I'll give you my pitch on my two ideas, and you can yay nay as is. Uh, Butthole would be going around to make sure that the people getting on these carts are also bringing what would be appropriate weapons for them, like long reach, like, oh, you've got mm -hmm. a pitchfork, thumbs up. Oh, you bring a knife? No, that's not going to help you on this cart <laughs> ride. Uh, and just occasionally uh, casting guidance on people to like create additional confidence in themselves, because I think this is pretty high risk. So doing that traditional, you know, sergeant walking down the line with the recruits all the way back to his gray water days. Only he has the ability to just magically make them better at things for short periods of time, so it seems more effective. Uh, I know I ask this every time. What's the what's the benefit on guidance? 
Oh, guidance. All it does is uh, for the next minute, it adds one D four to their ability checks. So it would just be if they were trying to load the cart, they'd just yep. be slightly more coordinated or slightly stronger. So it's... go ahead and roll a, a D four for me, please, sir. Yeah, great. That's a four. All right. Um, all right. So yeah, they're, uh, they're working much more uh, efficiently. I think the the big thing that's really helping helping them is both uh, Juniper's kind of like upbeat um, and also very kind of uh, as is true of like a lot of emergency situations. The fact that um, she isn't treating it like an emergency, the fact that she's just treating it as like, hey, these are things you can do step by step. It's fine. Um, and then the fact that you're going through and correcting the small errors along the way really does put the town's folk at ease. Um, they've gone from kind of a panicked mess of people desperately trying to grab anything they can to a much more um, uh, efficient uh, sort of emergency response team. Um, and uh, the packing is going well. You feel like you've actually um, set them up uh, pretty well for uh, for success. So they've, they've gained some additional HP um, from your, uh, your collective efforts. Um, right. And then... The only other idea I have is knowing there was a cart rental place, so there's probably some shittier carts. Mm -hmm. uh, Butthole would be interested in the idea of trying to get the bell from the tower down and onto a sixth cart that they could literally use if at some point they need to distract a horde. It's just like, there's a cart with a bell on it. Just hit park and ring the fucking nice. bell while everybody else keeps driving. Um, yeah, can you give me uh, an athletics check, please? Sure. And he definitely cast guidance on himself for this motherfucker. <laughs> and he's going to need it. Uh, that is a seven. Um, well, I mean, the bad news about a recently installed bell is it's really, you know, it's really in there. Um, so uh, you're up there and you're struggling with it, but it is, it is more attached than you'd intended. Um, and uh, just generally having a rough time with it. Um, at which point, uh, 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 Traven and Donnie Greybeard show up, and they're just like, "Oh, hey there, bro! I heard you're uh, trying to take the uh, to big their bell down. Well, you know, uh, me and uh, me and me and me and Trey here, we we lift pretty good. We could help you maybe." Oh, that'd be great if you guys could do that. Thumbs up! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need this down in that cart. Um, so, Ryan, given that you failed the check, um. I'm going to say uh, disadvantage on your next ability check. Uh, okay, to get, cool. To, so you can have this. It's like a minor devil's bargain. You can have it and not necessarily a combat check, but the next time you try and like pull something off, you're just a little tired because uh, you, you. Yeah, that makes perfect to sense to me. Done. Great. Um, so you get it down and uh, slick trick is like, hey, hi. Yeah, yeah. I got you the uh, the, the best deal here. Eh? It's, a, it's a real good one. Uh, you know, not too many miles on it. You can see you got the wheels recently replaced. Uh, it's going to be a, a nice thick ride for you there. Now, you know, I'd be uh, curious, you know, you seem like a man who might need more than one car. And like at this point, like the brothers are just lifting the bell in and like do not give a single fuck. Um, Juniper, but, Juniper's like come around to him. It's like no time for selling things. But, no, no time but, to make a quick buck. We're going, like, we're no, no, going. No, you're wrong. This is absolutely the time. I would like to rent all of your other cards. Do they come with mules? Uh, well, uh, no, I mean, uh, we, we, we have, uh, we have a mule, um, but, uh, normally we just sell the carts. You'd have to, you know, go talk to Ivan about maybe getting some more animals. You want to, you want to pull them there, but you all know, right, I, I, I can do Ivan, you a great deal. I'm, I'm, I'm taking all your carts. I'm taking all your carts. We'll talk about it later. I, okay. Ivan, Ivan, could I have mules? I just need all the mules you want. Old and shitty is good. Oh, uh, I, I feel like, uh, slick trick may have sold you a bad <laughs> bit of service there. I only got cows. I mean, they can pull, but not too cows. fast. You got okay, them? yeah, I got some cows. Uh, Great. How, many, how, how, do you, how do you get cows to move? Is there a way to make them scared or something so that they move aggressively? I mean, you know, the giant ring of fire out there might do it, but uh, generally <laughs> cows are pretty uh, they're pretty calm creatures. But yeah, you can scare a cow. Why? Okay. You plan on scaring some cows? Okay, here's the deal. I need you to bring your cows and go hook them up to his carts. And what we're going to do is send that convoy with no one on it south so that whoever's coming at us will see a convoy going south and a convoy going north, and they won't know which one is real because that one's just cows. Well, okay, but like, what's going to happen to my cows, though? I'm going to be honest. The cows are not going to make it, but maybe you will, and I feel like that's a pretty good trade. I mean, between the loss of my family's vase that Ginny knocked out of my hands earlier and the cows, that sounds like a pretty big loss for... For the Callow family, uh, am I going to be made whole on the back end of this, do you think? Absolutely. That's how this works. We're going to make everybody whole on the back end, but right now we're going to keep everybody whole so that they don't die before they get repaid. 
Yeah, okay, well, that seems good to me. I guess I'll go get the cows then. <sighs> Sorry, Betsy, you're you're going to be a hero cow after all. Um, then he goes off in, in search of the, the distraction oh. cows. Yeah, Juniper, I don't like it either. I heard your sad sound, but if it comes down to someone eats the children or the cows that were already going to be eaten get eaten by zombies, I vote B. This is a thought exercise you had earlier. <laughs> we did practice this. Do you think we should let the children die to the zombies to save the cows? I mean, ideally, I'd like there to be another option. That's as you've missed out. Do we have another option right now? This is actually the perfect example for you. Do we have another option? Well, I haven't thought of one. Exactly. We don't. So right now the cows are going and the kids get to live. Uh, oh, congratulations. Cows. You made the right choice by accident. Um, um there's a there's kind of a <laughs> there's a tap on your shoulder, Juniper, and um Crendon says, uh Hey, um this is gonna sound real stupid, but I, I kind of agree with uh with the sheriff here. Um Sir, I know I kind of work for you now, but what if what if I go with the cows? I can maybe see about protecting them and, and putting up a big enough fight that they think there's actually people there. Because I think if you just send a bunch of cows and carts, they they might notice there's no one there. But if I'm like running around wolfing out, that might that might help create a distraction. And if, if if I can meet back up with you guys later, I will. But the problem is I'm not running away. I just I think I can be part of a better distraction and you know maybe do a bit of good on the way out. Crenn, I'm just worried that you'll die. Whoever, that's not a good thing. It's you and an army of cows. I, you could be at our caravan defending people from zombies. Uh, look, man, I'll do whatever you say. You're the boss, but uh, just I just wanted to mean, offer my services. I, I don't disagree, butthole. I mean, like, we need food. I mean, the cows, they're milk producing cows. We Wait, do. so your argument is we can't... No, the cows go either way in this, Juniper. He just goes with them or he doesn't. That's what he was talking oh, about. We can't have one and I will say, the there, are, there are absolutely some calves being, like, loaded up. Um, and, like, there's just... The, the, the cows have to go in the carts. The cows are too slow to, like, go with the caravan. But they are definitely bringing, like, livestock. There's, like, sheep and stuff, too. Like, they're just loading all... Man like, there's just one Noah's Ark... <laughs> Box. It's just like a fucking animal crackers box with just animals stuffed in in every direction. Um, and just the, 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 the hardiest mule is ready to pull. Chief Justice, ultimately this decision falls to you, so I will allow it to be yours. Crendon, who is with us, is offering a service where he may die as a distraction to allow people to escape, or he can fight with us. I think we can agree either act will be full rehabilitation and he doesn't have to go to jail anymore. He's a person. You decide his sentence, whether he should be brought with us or paroled uh, to go with the cows and probably die. Um, no, I would agree, except that there's no sentence. It's completely your decision, Crandon. To be clear, if you decide to come with us, that's fine. You owe, you owe Your debt to society is paid. Well, uh, thanks. I, I appreciate that, but... No, I just want to make sure all these folks get out okay. That's that's really what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm a little less worried about what happens to me. So if what, what I can do best is go with you guys, I'll go with you guys. That's my choice. Okay, Crandon chooses to go with us. All right. Great. Crandon, if you want to grab any liquor that'll start fires or anything else you see that you can help with weapons for these people, do that. We're going to go make sure shit gets in carts faster. Great. Um, so you go and begin uh, loading up the rest of the carts. As uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the Trojan cow caravan is uh, is, is set up. Um, meanwhile, Quinny, you have dimension doored in behind uh, the riders. Uh, they have not noticed you. They are they are herding. They are somewhat frustrated with their job. But say, la vie, right. what do you do? Time for my favorite question. Uh, do I have advantage on oh, these baby. unsuspecting? Do boobs? you ever? All right, then. <laughs> Unsuspecting Blast. boobs, exhausted, pushing horses who want to be elsewhere, covered in zombie guts. Yeah, I think that's a good advantage. Okay, all right. Two beams. We're splitting it down the middle like a 7-10 split. The guy on the left, here's the two rolls. 7, 60, uh, 15 plus 8, 23 to hit. Yep, that'll hit. Okay. Guy on the right, 15, 16 plus 8. What did I just say? 24 to hit. Also hits. Uh, so I almost don't give a shit about the damage, but I'll roll it anyway. I care much, much more about pushing each of them 10 feet off of their horses and into the horde of zombies. Yep. Uh, so seven damage on the left, two damage on the right. Okay. Uh, and do they have to roll saves against the push or the push just happens because you reduce the damage? I will double check, but I'm almost certain it just happens because I'm pretty them. sure it does. If, yeah. if it, like if their AC 
like is higher than my role, then that's basically them resisting the push and or gotcha. like missing no. them. Well, they, they definitely didn't uh, okay. at all. So um, with a with a Yelp, um, you uh, you just see both of them go go flying like full pinwheel arms uh, into the horde. Um, and as they hit the ground, um, you know, the, uh, the robes fly up and, uh, the, the squishy, squishy, tasty, um, humans underneath are revealed and, uh, immediately, uh, a bunch of the zombies around them stop and just turn. And it's just classic Romero, like all of them leaning down and pulling out a fistful of guts, um, as, uh, as they just rip their, uh, their former herdsmen, uh, to shreds. The two horses fuck off immediately as a free action can i use beast speech sure to call out to these horses and say come with me i can save you I, it's a gamble. well I, sir <laughs> that does sound like a decent enough deal to me but i must uh talk first to my my dear companion uh tedrick uh do you believe we should go with this oh, fine fuck. fellow he does seem to have freed us from our, our current predicament uh well uh uh uh, These yes. are the spooked horses. Yes, um, I, I believe that this is indeed a, a proper course of action. Um, uh, pardon me, sir. Are you planning on on driving us through the these walking teeth? I was uh, thinking uh, more like around. Uh, oh. you see where there's a caravan. Other other uh, equestrian uh, folks, such as yourselves, are uh, are moving out with us bipedal uh folk to uh to get to safety oh very good very good well hey listen as long as we're allowed to stomp on the teeth monsters whenever we want i think we're, we're happy to go with you if you have anything heavy uh perhaps a cart full of livestock like us who just need a little bit of help we could help with that yes you got a deal absolutely yeah fantastic we'll hop on and i do so um and just like the fucking cover of a frank miller comic uh, with you know, Dark Knight r- uh, rises. Just fucking two war horses burn through this zombie horde. Oh, even better. Um, back towards the uh, back towards uh, the the wagon train uh, with with Quinny Brown Barrow, um, uh, you know, aboard. Um, and uh, soon enough, um, you meet back up with your compatriots. Uh, you hitch the the war horses up to the uh, the heavier uh, sections, which can now travel much easier and will no longer need to roll against, you know, all the things they, they were going to have to. <laughs> um, you've got the wheel. Uh, one of them will have the bell and one of them will have uh, livestock, we'll say. So one of them is helping team mule on livestock and the other one's yeah. got, got the bell cart, uh, which can be, you know, detached if needed. Um, the, uh, the cow train is ready. Um, the, the town is as ready as it's going to be. Uh, what are your, your kind of, uh, any, any last major actions you want to take before we, we get underway? Quinny, I think just because of these new, still new revelations to him, it is doing a head count for like important people in his mm-hmm. life. He's looking for his parents. He's looking for Jenny. He's looking for Raquel, um, for Jenny's sake. Um, yep. yep. Yeah, he's, he yep, just wants to make sure all, they're all accounted for. Yep, they're all there. Everyone's loaded up. The the folks who can't fight, like the doctor, are um, are you know as defensible as they can be. Um, between butthole and um, between butthole juniper and uh, Crendon, um, they've managed to like equip people with again functional things. So you know. There, there's there's a lot of pole arms and, and that yeah. sort of thing pitchforks shovels yep. so yeah. even folks like like the doctor it's kind of like stay back but if anything gets near you just literally poke it like keep it at bay with the cane don't try and like yeah do anything else like this is this is your weapon this is what you're good with um but also like your job is to protect people not to fight things you there you're the, the super jacked brother farmers punch whatever you want to punch <laughs> like um and yeah. so on and so forth uh, uh so then Quinny would just situate himself at the front of the caravan so that he can summon forth frostbite at the time when we need to put out 30 mm-hmm. feet of fire. Yeah, so I imagine if Juniper can also put out fires, then Juniper probably also goes at the front and Crendon and Butthole can take the rear of the caravan. Sure. Yeah. Uh, just um, in case things Juniper- come in. Butthole would... Oh, sorry, do you want... Oh, no, I was just saying Juniper can cast Ice Storm, which I think would be useful in a... Never cast on a fire before, but I think the heat might negate some of the difficult terrain uh, aspect of it. Great. Cool. All right. So, yeah, you two go to the front. Crandon, I've got this for you that might be a little bit useful. 
uh, and he pulls out a uh, hammer and sickle. It's the the war hammer that he discovered in the Wild West. That was his Moonlight Bringer replacement that has the exact same properties as Moonlight Bringer, which is great because it has bonus damage against undead. <laughs> and he's <laughs> like, if you're going to fight as you, maybe try this on for size. And then if you got a wolf out, you can. Uh, and he, he hoists it. He looks a little uncomfortable with it. It's not like he's not a hammer fighter, but um, he, he says, I mean, yeah, until, you know, until I, I can let the beast out, this this will do. Thank you. Okay, Juniper, your sword's good, right? You, you good for undead fighting, or do you need something with a boost? It's it's great. Okay, you got it. Uh, cool. So we'll be at the back. You guys be at the front. We can meet in the middle. If something goes wrong, uh, I guess let's let's fix it. Uh, if it's something's going wrong and we haven't completely fallen apart, assume I'll go to the middle to fix it. So you guys just keep everything running, because if we park, we're fucked. Uh, Quinny, you've got striding and springing. If any car cart goes down we can shift it aside and i guess you grab whatever's most important and jump it back into the caravan does that make sense with people uh, or whatever yeah yeah i i can definitely try to keep an eye on that good cool, cool all right let's hope this doesn't get too bad when it Everyone just remember does. that yeah this is step one of question mark number of steps whatever's beyond here we don't know you know that chickless nage guy is out there if we can if you can give me access to him, you know, that's where I'm most effective is hitting one guy as hard as I can. Here's the question, knowing that we're all a distraction. This is going to be ugly. Please don't get mad at me, Quinny. I know you're going to get mad at me, but I'm going to point this out anyways. You have a ring of invisibility, but right now, if any of the fries show up, they're going to go after you. Ginny is very good at stabbing people if they don't see her coming. Should we give your ring to Ginny so she's invisible from them and won't get attacked in advance? No. And if a fry comes after you, she can stab them. Okay, I thought it might keep her alive and help you, but otherwise she's just out there being seen through a whole We're battle gonna... with zombies in the fries. I they will give her the ring you. of invisibility, but I am not going to have her murdering people. Okay, she's already Putting stabbed. Yourself... The... She stabbed the shit out of Crendon, and he just points to Crendon standing right next to him. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and he's still alive. We need to seal this deal. Uh, and, uh, Jitty just kind of like shoves you like just full on, like shoves you in the back. Um, and she says, look, I've had to take care of myself for a really long time. And this, all of this is going to shit. My entire world is literally going up in flames right now. So listen, I'm probably going to stab someone. Mm -hmm. And the real question, Quinny is whether it's going to be one of them or you. And her mom is like looking on approvingly <laughs> while also nodding to you about the invisibility ring. Like, yeah, I was gonna say, well, I don't know how the answer to that question yet, kid. So I hope it's not me. And I give her the ring. <laughs> Well, good. It won't be. And then she just puts it on him. <laughs> um, and uh, as uh, as the, the wagon train gets going, um, Raquel uh, sort of steps forward, just holding like, you know, a cleaver from from the kitchens of the uh, the inn in one hand uh, and like a hand crossbow she keeps under the bar in the other. Um, and she just says, um, uh, thanks for, for trying to keep her safe. She's real bad at that. Yeah, well, thanks for raising her. I didn't. I didn't know any of this was happening, you know, yeah. I if I had known a lot of stuff might have been different, but that's, I can't, it's almost pointless to say it. Like, I'm thank you for everything you've done. Well, it's worth, um, I told her she should tell you. So this, this isn't really on you. Uh, and, uh, sides from what these guys have said, uh, well, I'm glad she's got some of your DNA too. Now, shall we go kill some zombies? Yes. Yes. <laughs> when he's like, this is weird that we're not like strangling each other. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she just kind of nods at you and uh, goes in and gets into the crowd. Uh, Sheriff Moss, uh, you're the one who knows how to get, get one of these things going. What do you yell to everyone uh, to begin the, uh, the escape uh, from, from Quinton? Um, <laughs> I transform into Echo, but instead of like, doing like my creepy girl song it's more just like kind of prancing to the front of the line and being like look everyone i'm literally a little girl and i feel great about this you should feel great too we're all gonna survive now let's go and uh jenny yells that's the fucking scariest thing I've ever seen. So if what's out there is less scary than this, then I'm glad this is on our side. All right, come on, let's go. Um, and as as Echo, like I feel like you're like dropping the flag at a drag race. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The uh, the wagon train starts going. Um, you make your way back, um, transforming kind of back into to Juniper. I'm sure so you can have full access to your. Or do you stay as, as Echo? Um. 
Yeah, I'll transform back into Juniper. Echo's not great with the big sword. Yeah, I figured. Um, so you kind of transform back, wheel your way back to um, just sort of the front of the... I think it's like as everyone's mobbing by you, you just kind of continue to like march along with them, um, <laughs> kind of like Madeline style, and then just slowly shift back into um, uh, Juniper in the chair. Yeah. Um, and uh, together, kind of the, the wagon train drives forward um, towards the uh, the zombie wall, um, the zombies have kind of dispersed. They're kind of wandering a uh, butthole with your magic. You're able to keep them at bay. People do as you've trained them, shove them away um, with actually a considerable amount of uh, of speed. Also, admittedly, most of them are used to the idea of zombies by now. They'd heard from the people at Treebury, like, you know, they're not good at fighting them, but they're certainly aware of how to, to manage them. Um, and uh, uh, as you approach the the flaming wall um, that, that used to protect uh, the barrier that used to protect this town, um, ice begins to fall from the sky as as juniper you you summon um, just chunks of, of frozen water to just help douse um, just immediately steam bursts up um, and Quinny uh, leading your hometown um, to your new home. Uh, and, and to safety, uh, you draw forth your blade, um, uh, and the flames go out and with a sort of a, a, a mighty, um, cry of, of a, a excitement and, and some fear, uh, the town of Quinton and their, their baggage train and the only hope, uh, for the, the people of the fortress surges forth, uh, through the, uh, the steaming and hissing barricade, uh, and out into the world of the dead. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Elizabeth at EL Hamstring on Twitter, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra, and Dum Dums and Dragons logo is by Decapitated Markers at Decapitated Marker on Twitter. Our theme songs are And Now for That Massive Coronary and Skipping Through the Orchestra Pit Part 1 by Peter Gresser, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J A H Z Z A R all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. And tune in next week for more Dum Dums and Dragons. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. The Half-Blind Prophet, Christopher Little, Sue One, George Dolby, Lord Abradovic, Orion Birchfield, Scott Garland, Benjamin V, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Cade Peters, Richard Cranium, Anna Zed, Logan, Fire on Friendly, Acrix, Grandma Likes D&D, Alan, Austin Not Powers Fry, Stabby Stranger, Roman Brown, and Jill and Noel LaPlante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you.